Okay, after some significant work with various different wire brushing tools, the base is now ready to be painted and has come up very well indeed. I'm well pleased with it. You just have to be prepared to put the work in and go steady. I also managed to get the, uh, where is it? Uh, which one is it? It's that one. That was the one where the, the screw sheared off that hole there. I managed to get that out. Um, basically I filed it off flush, very accurately centre popped the middle of the bolt and then started with a 1.5mm drill, drilled, it, drilled out through the centre, then I went up to 1.8 and by the time I got to 1.8 the what was left of the bolt had become loose and I was actually able to just gently tease it out and therefore saving the thread. Ran a 3mm tap through it and it's now fine. As you can see 99% of the rust are now has been removed from this and it's as i said it's now it's now pretty much ready for for, for repainting um while we're on the subject i just want to say a quick word about wire brushing <coughs> now uh, you can see over here i've got my two main uh tools the green one is a kind of a dremel clone it's a 130 watt uh, rotary tool and that's the only tool that I use a steel wire brush in, and I use these little tiny um, steel steel bristled Dremel type wire brushes, and and that's really fine. That's not particularly abrasive at all. On all the other tools in the Hilda, that's a 400 watt. I use that as a brass wire brush, and the tool that I use pretty much <laughs> more than anything. I'll just swing the camera around. This is my good old half horsepower Hilka bench grinder that I got off of eBay, which I absolutely love. But this again, that is brass. It may not look like it on the camera, but it is. It's a brass wire wheel. When you're doing model steam engine work, model work generally, I would have said, you don't really need steer, steel wire wheels. Brass is more than adequate to get rid of the crap that you're, gonna, you're likely to want to remove. Sure, if you're going to be doing car engine parts and cleaning that kind of stuff, then yes, you're going to probably need steel, uh, steel wheels. But the Hilka, with that brass wire wheel, I probably use, well, second only to the lathe. It's probably the power tool in my workshop which gets used the most. It's absolutely brilliant and essential if you want to get uh, to cleaning up parts for models. So there we go. Oh, and one last thing, when you're doing any kind of wire brushing work, always, always wear eye protection. These things are trying to blind you. That's one of their major side functions, right? Particularly these little bastards, they, the little wire, uh, uh, individual wires on those, those brushes, they fly off and they impale themselves on you. It's, it's amazing, they don't seem to go anywhere else. They generally will just go into you. So always, always wear eye protection. But yeah, so the, the, the base for the, uh, Markland Vertical is now done. I'm probably going to use the high temperature engine paint for it because obviously, you know, the burner sits right in here and this is going to get really hot. So I think we'll just use high temperature engine paint on that and I'm going to use that on the firebox that will match up quite nicely. So yeah, I think we're about ready to do some painting. Well, here it is, all done, apart from the sight glass. I still got an issue with the sight glass. That's the original sight glass in there at the moment, just for the purposes of uh, shooting this video. But uh, I, I bought some six mil uh, sight glass tubing, but the internal bore of the, of the tubing is considerably smaller than that. It's very thin walled tube that's, that was in there originally. So, um, so okay, what are, we, what are the new parts then? Well, obviously the chimney cap and the chimney <coughs> have been, weren't there, so I've had to, had to make those. The, uh, the chimney itself is basically stainless steel tube, which is blued using heat treatment method. And I've done quite a few chimneys now using this method and it works out really, really well. Basically, you just heat the tube up. What I tend to do is I heat it up until it's about sort of like a dull red color. And then as it cools down, it slowly changes color. And when it gets to the blue color that you want, you simply make sure it's even all over and then just dunk the thing in some motor oil and you get a very nice blued stainless steel pipe, which is great. Safety valve, it's now got a safety valve. I've copied uh, pictures of what I could see find on the internet of safety valves for these vertical steam engines. And that's uh, that appears to be okay working. I have uh, uh, 
run this on air. Uh, purely, I'll explain why I did that. I don't normally, normally I'll steam them straight away, but obviously with the sight glass issues, I can't do that at the moment. But yes, I did run it on air to, to check something, but I'll, I'll say, I'll, I'll explain why I did that in a minute. But the only other thing I think that I had to make We'll let it come round. Yes, the the handle was almost completely missing on the on the boiler blowdown valve. So I've I've copied as best I can. It's a little bit of mahogany I turned up on the lathe. Uh, I've copied as best I can the, the 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 one on the whistle, which is this one here. So why have I run it? I'll test run it on air. Okay. Well, we'll let it come round again, and we'll stop it there. Right. Now, when I came to put it back together, I didn't notice this when I took it apart, but partially because the uh, piston valve here was seized. When I came to put it back together, I noticed that the engine frame was bent and I reckon it must've got dropped or something, but it, and it, but basically it was, um, it was bent that way, but it was also bent this way. So it was, it was completely cocked all over. So I had to very gently persuade it back into the position where it should have should have been and and I and I, although this was then nice and free I wanted to make sure that it would actually run like that before I, I put hot water in it and tried to steam it so yes I've run it on air and it runs fine on very low pressure air so I'm quite pleased about that the flywheel was a little bit out of true I've basically uh trued that up in the uh in the in the in the lathe and that works that works fine as I said it's just really the it's just really the safety glass, the, the sight glass issue that, that I've got at the moment. And I can't really see a way of using the glass I've got and sealing it. So what I may well do is simply block off, it's fairly easy to block off the holes for the, uh, for the sight glass, which will at least allow us to steam it. Uh, I've got a little burner out of one of my um, Bing engines, which I think will do the trick nicely. So uh, yeah. Yeah, I think that's probably what I've, I'm, I'm impatient to get to see this running on steam, obviously. So that's what we'll probably do. Well, this is my first attempt at steaming it. As you can, you can see what my solution was to the sight glass problem. I simply very carefully removed the two unions that were on the boiler. It turned out that they were six mil threads, but they were a 0.75 pitch. So I've made up some brass bungs to go in there and hopefully they will hold and uh, yeah we don't seem to be getting any leaks out of the blowdown valve which is great um, I put about just over 200 milliliters of water which brought it up to about this this point here so that's that's more than adequate whether that burner is going to be man enough the little bing one I don't know we will see but it certainly fits in the little ring in the base, which is, you know, so would tend to indicate that that's the size that the original one was. Okay, well, we'll let it heat up and see what happens. Right, let's try it now. Yes. Look at that, running under its own steam. Fantastic. It's very wet, there's an awful lot of water coming out of the exhaust. So maybe I might put too much water in it, I don't know. But that should burn off anyway, that should boil off, so. There we go. Oh, I'm well pleased with that. When you consider the state of this thing when I got it, I mean, that's, that's just amazing. Everyone's getting a shower, but apart from that. Also, every now and again, something's catching. I'll have to, I'll have to look into that. Well, that's the marketing 4106 one running like a trooper. Obviously, you don't need to put much water in it. I must remember that for future use. Try the whistle, probably just going to get a shower. Yeah, thought so. Anyway, 
It runs! Yes, well pleased with that. And my sight glass bungs appear to be holding up fine. Uh, safety valves leaking a little bit, but not too much. Yeah, pleased with that, definitely. My second, oh, this is my second Marklin. I only have two of these. Uh, normally they just go for ridiculous amounts of money, but nobody seemed to be interested in this one, and I don't know why, because it's a lovely engine. Okay, it didn't look like much when I got it, but it certainly looks fine now. Oh, I think that's amazing. That's absolutely lovely. Let's take the burner out for a minute. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that at all. Oh, really, really nice. It's a shame there's no regulator on these. That would be uh, that would be quite nice. But no, I'm I'm well pleased with that. That is a very nice running engine. And very quiet. Well, there you go. That's about it. A successful restoration of the Marklin 4106 slash six and a half. And one I very much enjoyed doing actually. A lot of work, especially on the base, but it, uh, it definitely paid off when they run like this. You know, it's, it's definitely justifies all the effort and everything that you put into it. So that'll be it then for the uh, Marklin 4106. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. Cheers.